very interesting points, and I was wondering if you can share your thoughts on how you think how the community is going to decide which of those tools to use, because now we've got four of them, or even more of them, which all try to do the same thing, in a sense. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the reasons that we focused on trying to centralise how the usage of those is happening and map it so that people can start to see what's working. In the study that the uh, Nanyang Technological University did of our data last year, they found that the most popular place for people to share their work was Facebook, but the channel in which the links being shared were more likely to be clicked was LinkedIn. And that was very interesting for us because A, I didn't think so many people would be sharing their work via Facebook, um, and B, I thought Twitter would probably be the one where um, most links were being clicked. So it completely blew out of the water what I was expecting. Now that's early data from us and there's more analysis needed, but as we build up this data set over time, we'll increasingly be able to answer that kind of question for a wider range of services and uh, break that down and look at how that, um, what, what the facts are there for different disciplines or different um, career levels, different countries and so on. So I think the only answer to that is just that we, keep, we need to keep building up the data um, and then looking at that to see where people are actually having success rather than where they're putting effort in and getting no, no results. Yeah. Just to say, I mean, obviously for, for us at Frontiers, we're, we're building on what Jean was talking about. So uh, it's altmetric to the capital A that we have built into our platform. So actually we're sort of talking from the same perspective there. So everything that Jean was talking to you about, about how altmetrics uh, brings together the various um, channels of uh, me mention and citation and, and retweet and what have you, um, is what's built into Frontiers. So we also try to link up, as I said before, with things like Orchid, uh, which also Kudos uses. Um, we also made our Loop platform, it plugs into any other institutional profiles that you have. We have a plugin that we built that's deliberately open to try to make sure that you, you can sort of plug this into anything else you have and then it, it will use it with all of that rather than having to create new ones each time. Although yes, it is a problem. I think we have so many channels. I mean, you only have to look at, we have Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, you name it. Um, it, there, there are so many. I think on the whole it's to do with personal choice um, and we just want to make that as available as possible, really. Yeah, I'll just add very quickly. Um, it is about interoperability, right? And actually the APIs, um, Allmetric as an API, Crossref as an API, we're actually working a little bit with Crossref now on the DET stuff too. So mm -hmm. it isn't so much, I think it's more like we're all we're all working in it together. Um, it, it's the choice of the platform, yeah, it, it's a personal choice. Um, you might see certain stats on certain publisher pages and, and so on, but at the end of the day, it's a personal choice. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with um, what, what, every, what everyone else says. Personal choice, um, interoperability, um, but I do, I do think choice is a really big thing because I think, you know, part of some of the issues around publishing comes from, and I don't want to end the day talking about the impact factor, but is by having a metric whereby people don't see that they're being, that they're being judged on something that they don't have control or choice over. And I think that people might want to use, use data in, in different ways and, um, and mix, it up, um, mix it up and use it on their own platforms in their own tools and services and I, I think that's that's a really important thing about giving people different ways to use stuff so that they can pick and choose the one that's right for them as opposed to having something imposed on them. I think just time for maybe one, one more quick question, conscious of time. Cool, um, thanks for so a very good um, range of um, solutions for reaching out to the networks and everything but how do we deal with traditional um, institutions like funding bodies, supervisors, how do we convince them um, which mm -hmm. metric to use, you know, how do we replace the impact factor, mm -hmm. how do you see this being incorporated with the traditional um, flows, I guess? I can start on that one. Um, so actually what we're seeing is that funders are starting to get interested independently and Altmetric is certainly working with a lot of funders already, um, actually mainly in the US to start with, um, just because I think it's, oh, and I was talking to someone at the break too about this, it's just like there's this whole feeling right now, I think in the whole scholarly community, that things need to change. Yeah. And I think funders are the key to driving that change. And so the conversations are coming from them, but it isn't that they're like, 
tell us this one metric and we're going to put it in and make everybody use that. I think it's more they're trying to get a sense for the, the landscape of what's available, what's best for everybody, and then, again, work with everyone. We're also very nice. We just work with each other. But that's essentially how it is, that they're already interested. That's, that's my perspective on it. Um, I think I, w I would mention um, you have on your chairs the Open Science Works brochure from, from Frontiers. Just to summarize, we actually have um, a, an, a lot, blah, blah, an office, a dedicated office we've opened in Brussels, which lobbies to the, e to the European Commission. Um, we are actually trying to get our voice for open science heard. And within that, breaking the dependence on the impact factors. So we, we believe that you have to start at the top. We believe that there's no use shouting within the academic echo chamber about things needing to change. We believe you have to get out there and make some mandates happen to change institutional mindset because it is the institutions that need to change their mindset and this is extremely hard to reach out to because it's very embedded in tradition. Um, and the impact factor has been convenient for them. It was invented by an institutional librarian um, and it has continued to be used. So we are trying to lobby um, at a much higher level to make awareness of all of these fantastic um, things that are now available that really we think are a better measure of academia. Yeah, I think just a final point on that really for me is that it's, it's all about convenience. The reason nothing is changing is because nothing as convenient as the current scenario has yet presented itself. But all of us are working in the meantime to build up the data sets and build up the interfaces to that data and distill down the questions that the people in those sorts of positions have that make it an easy for us to answer them but with a much more nuanced data set and bringing in obviously more than just data as well, you know, with, with impact case studies and things like that. So um, there's a lot of work, there's a lot of innovation in this area and certainly it's not only incumbent on researchers to try and bring about this change. We're all working on it from, from all different angles as well. So let's hope that that change happens soon. Okay, so I think just in the interest of time and because it's a Friday, um, I'm going to have to, to cut that short now. But a um, huge thank you to our speakers from the final session. <laughs>